Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon! Welcome in, everyone. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Hello. Welcome to Wolf Friday. I'm very keen because we are making uh, German pancakes, aka Puff Daddy's Dutch Babies deliciousness. I'm going to also show you how to make the new recipe on the website, which is ciabatta. Um, and five minutes of work. It's amazing. It's a very delicious recipe. Um, and then we're also possibly going to be making meatloaf. We'll see. We are in a little bit of a time limit because I'm going to pink tonight. This afternoon, really. Um, so we have to leave here by 3.30. Um, and we're going to try and get maybe in a little nap before that. And I have to figure out what I'm wearing. I just... I was supposed to do it yesterday, and then I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just find something in my cupboard. And then I was like laying in bed this morning. I'm like, I don't actually have much. But today we're going to be having a fun stream. Um, happy end of the week to you, Roselli. Nani, kid, how's your week? Tell me all about your experience at, um, at Taylor. Delicious. I've been waiting to see you. Carrie! What's this button do? 47 months. Thank you very much. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you very much. Um, C Money Rules, welcome in. Hello, everyone. Give me a holla in chat. Margot, who else is here? Give me a holla. Thank you for everyone for being here. Happy Friday. Annie, welcome in. Annie, how's your week been? Um, what are we doing? Yeah, so it was Unreal, We Got Forever, and always as a surprise song, always and forever. Okay. Forever and always, sorry. Forever and always as a surprise song. So I was stoked. Amazing. And your seats were good. You were happy with everything, how it all went. Um, you didn't get the day where it was rain. You, did you go night one in Sydney? Did you get the rain? Week's been good. Just been playing games most of the time. Not going to lie. Oh, what are you playing at the moment? Happy Easter Fridays to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited. If you can tell. Um, okay, so I've added some new songs to the playlist um, and I had a little cry this morning. Just how grateful I am just to be able to get the opportunity to go to Pink and I've loved her for a long, long time and um, I'm really just, just, it's been a, I was in a corporate box. Yes, I forget, I forget, I forget. Pretty good seats. Nope, I went Monday so I skipped the horrible weather night. Fantastic. And the, the box was nice. Um, how was the, like, did you meet heaps of people? Um, what was that I was going to say? You're paying Dead by Della. Ugh. 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 Oh, no, uh, it was a Dead by Daylight that I was trying to play. I always get, for, get a little bit confused. It was Dead by, uh, Dead by Daylight, the one where you, you chase around people. There were a bunch of TikTok influencers, which was cool. Cool. How was Pink? Pink is tonight. Pink is tonight. So we're going, um, we're, we've decided we're going to drive. We're going to go and get sushi. There's a sushi train. And then we're going to drive and we've paid for parking. So it was, it was like rather than like fuddy-duddy around in the city trying to get parking and then walking, we've paid for parking. It's 20 bucks. So we paid for tw a parking, and then I think there's a shuttle, or you just walk across the bridge. So there's, um, it's going to be a little bit warm, but it isn't as bad. And at least we know we, where we can park, like expectations of time and starting and things like that. So, yeah. Sushi and pink, great time. I've been so excited. I don't know if I've been more excited for sushi or pink. Joking. Of course, sushi. No, no, no I'm kidding. Um, but, yes, I'm very pumped. I'm very pumped. I couldn't remember because um, she's done the East shows already. Yes. So she did the East Coast and then she did Adelaide and then uh, she's got tonight and tomorrow night um, uh, two shows in Perth. And then I think she's done with Australia. So um, it's fantastic. I play Survivor with friends. We are a little too good now. Oh, honey, we bought $500 in sushi and got free pink ticket. <laughs> I know some folk who would, like, uh, would be like that. Really? Wow. Um, okay, so before we continue, let's go back to last time on, show we did on the last stream. Exceed has made me, um, about half an hour ago, he made me a protein smoothie. 
Um, and I haven't drunk it, so I've got to drink it really quickly. <sighs> Guys, look what we did on Wednesday. Uh, we did walking tuck. Like, obviously, it's nostalgia week, so recreating foods from your childhood, college, memories, um, trying some new fun things. And we did walking tacos, which were actually pretty cool. Exceed said he likes them, he prefers them in the bowl compared to the packet, um, which are understandable. We did Rotel Dip, poor man's pizza. We received gifts from Nito Burrito. You know how I love little things um, from Amazon. So we got a little, um, oh, you can't see it, a little pickle and um, a scrub daddy. So there's a lot of little innuendos there with scrub daddy, um, but you have to go and watch the, um, the clips. It was funny. Um, Kerry resubbed Flossie for 23 months, Liz for 20, hold on, Flossie for 23, Liz for 24. Kerry, did you just resub twice? Maddie rated Kerry for 46 months. Um, 100 cheeky bits, three subs, two new people in the form of follows. Um, no, she's not done. Then she goes to New Zealand. No, no, I'm, I'm saying she's done in Australia. She, uh, she just added new... Um, she finishes at the end of the year. The whole tour finishes like in November. I oh, know no, no, she's not done in Australia. Um... I'll have to go back and watch the VOD. The VOD was quite funny. Um, there's a few clips as well that came out of it. So it's adult, adult, maybe more, a bit more adult content around the, the Scrub Daddy. Um, but how has your week been, everyone? Tell me what's been happening. Just clean up a little bit here. I made this dough. So this dough is from the new recipe on the website, which is five minute ciabatta rolls um it's no knead dough so it's super easy you just mix it all together cover it leave it out on the bench and it turns out like this i put mine in the fridge for a little bit um well overnight and this is what the dough is going to kind of look like it's going to rise a bit more and then we will cut it and shape it um and i'll show you the rest of it but it's five minutes of work so you mix it takes about two minutes to dump all the ingredients in and mix it then you let it sit at room temperature. If you want to do it, depending on your timeline, if you want to um, do it in the morning, then you can have rolls for the night. If you want to do it at night and then you have rolls for the morning, you mix it, dump, like dump it, mix it, cover it, set it aside for like eight to 10 hours and then dump it out, chop it onto a floured baking tray and then let them rise for a little bit and then bake them. Super easy. So it's about three minutes, uh, two minutes of mixing and then three minutes of shaping. And that's five minutes of dough. Easy, easy, easy. So I'm very keen to show you again. We did them maybe two weeks ago. So delicious rolls. A really great introduction to bread because you don't have to knead it. It tastes nice and it's kind of like approachable, I think. Um, and it's an introduction to like, especially uh, it's a good introduction for or beginners for high hydration bread because you're not actually stretching and folding very much. Um, it's uh, like a mix and dump and then cut. Like, I don't know, it couldn't be, it couldn't be easier, I don't think. So anyway, we're gonna do a deep dive into Discord. I need to drink this. Okay, let's have a look what you guys have been up to. Okay, what do we got? So this is from last stream. This is the cake that we made. I did say, tell you guys that I had some issues with it. I thought it was too kind of um, um, a little bit dry, but also too crumbly. Um, so I'm gonna try and make my own version. I did take it the next day, yesterday, to my dad, my stepdad and my brother. They said they didn't mind it, but they said it was too dry in the center. So we're gonna create a Molly version um, of snack cake, I'm gonna call it. Um, but I can't wait, I can't wait to make it again because I actually really liked it. Just a few tweaks it needs. Um, 
So Josh said, I thought I'd pop in a couple of notes on meatloaf. It's the ultimate comfort food because we're going to try and make um, it today. Not pudding. <laughs> well, we had this discussion about pudding. So you'll see in a minute. Um, in the UK, they call pudding dessert. It's like it's another name for dessert. Say, oh, what are you having? Like after dinner, we're going to have pudding. It's, it's another name for dessert. It takes a bit of, to get used to. Pudding is also kind of like a cake that's made in a casserole dish. So you can have sticky date pudding or self-sourcing pudding. Um, it, it's a little bit confusing with some different terms around the world. Um, but Josh put some information in here for us uh, for the meatloaf today. When I cook meatloaf, I don't really use any particular recipe. I like to experiment, throw things in from the fridge. The base of my meatloaf is half beef, half pork. I use an egg and some breadcrumbs as a binding. I prefer leaner ground meat over fattier ground meat. Um, I top my meatloaf with bacon, put mushrooms, onions, garlic, carrots. I'm not a fan of, uh, sorry, some people put carrot. Um, as for the barbecue sauce or ketchup, either is good, depends on what what your side will be what goes with what sides go with meatloaf um if i'm having green veggies on the side i'll play with barbecue or a smoky ketchup with liquid smoke a little side of vinegar and a good ketchup with some brown sugar if i want mashed potatoes i'll make a gravy with drippings mm. a salad mashed potatoes okay um and then this is the milk squad so this is a strawberry cake so strawberry flavored sponge with strawberry icing. I've never had a strawberry cake before. So maybe that's something that we need to make. Um, this is cornflake tart, a firm favorite in schools, a thin short crust pastry base topped with strawberry or raspberry jam, then topped with a thick layer of crunchy cornflakes. Oh, interesting. Never seen anything like this before. Um, and then this is what we would call chocolate concrete. Okay. It was served with mint flavored custard, AKA American pudding, um, or pink custard. When baked, it has a firm biscuit type texture and good crunch. Okay. I'd be keen to try that. It reminds me of my chocolate coconut slice from the website. You guys got to make that. It's very yummy. And this is typical nostalgic school pudding, school cake, um, jam and coconut sponge. The sponge topped with jam and coconut, always served with warm custard, aka North American's pudding. Look at that. Nice. Very cool. I love learning about different countries, foods. So a lot of this was served at school in the UK, but I've been told that it's been outlawed now because of the sugar content in, you know, unhealthy foods or whatever. But this is what Demilk Squad went to school with. Beware, our lovely Beware, making my banana bread. One bowl banana bread from our First Things First cookbook. Yum. Uh, this is a firm favourite of mine. One bowl, like it says, very easy, very tasty. Uh, you can do it plain, you can add chocolate chips or nuts, whatever. It's a good one. It's my go-to. All right, thank you. Looks great, beware. Like sliced, toasted, or just sliced in with butter on it. Mm. Um, and to me, that breakfast sandwich from a local spot. Everything seasoned biscuit, local egg, cheese, sausage, and house-made jam. Okay. Oh, this looks good. And everything, bis uh, everything seasoned biscuit sounds good. I like the little plate. That's very cute, very quaint, isn't it? I like the egg. I, I don't think I've ever had jam in a breakfast sandwich. I like the idea of it because I'm like a big fan of like a bit of sweetness, acidity that goes just, you know, when you're eating, especially like turkey with cranberry sauce, sausage, egg, jam. I like it. We had a little accident, so I made the dough for these on the last stream. Um, these were the hot cross buns. I put them in the oven and I was working late and I thought, oh, you know, I could smell them and I thought, oh, they smell good, but I'll keep baking them because, you know, they'll need longer than I think. Didn't realise until I came to get them out of the oven that the oven was too hot, so they got a bit dark on the top. 
but they taste delicious. So we did uh, chocolate cherry, chocolate and plain. So, so nothing in them. The recipe's on the website. Um, oh, and it's linked down here. Easy Easter hot cross buns. They are easier than you think. Nice and spicy, big fluffy buns. Um, you can eat them on their own. Or you can, you can do, you, you know, you can add the crust if you want to. You can remove the crust if you and just have some delicious spiced buns. They're very good. Um, there's a mix in suggestions there as well. So you can add like cranberry and white chocolate. Um, these were cherries. So it's same way the sultanas, you kind of soak in, um, in whiskey and then cook them. So then they plump up and they absorb the, the alcohol, but then the alcohol cooks off. So they're non-alcoholic. This cherry I soaked in spiced rum. So crack and rum. Um, and then cooked them on the stove. They were plumped up really nice and added chocolate, milk chocolate. Exceed said he couldn't really taste the chocolate, so probably I'll do dark chocolate next time, maybe. I don't know. Um, the question about pudding. So UK often refers to cakes as pudding. Australian pudding is usually a cake dessert served in a casserole dish. US calls pudding we call custard. Okay. So like, you know how you have chocolate pudding cups? We call that custard cups. Um, Nito went out. Hey, Antamina, how you doing? Um, Nito, uh, it took me a while to get used to Mr. B meaning dessert when he was saying pudding. Um, lobster ramen from Paco Ramen in Mooney Ponds. <sighs> I never had lobster ramen. That sounds good. Yeah. Ramen is our backup tonight. So I haven't booked this sushi train. It seems quite popular, but I thought we're only going at like 4.30, we should be able to get in. And if we don't, in the same complex, there's a nice ramen place. Um, anyone else tried this yet? Unfortunately, it tastes like cough syrup. Spiced Coca-Cola. Hey Google, what is spiced Coca-Cola? I can imagine On this. On the website, like... coca-cola.com. They say, Coca-Cola spiced. It's Coca-Cola, only spiced. Coca-Cola spiced transforms the familiar into the extraordinary. Blending the iconic taste of Coca-Cola with a burst of refreshing notes from raspberry and spiced flavors, Coca-Cola spiced offers an uplifting taste experience. I don't know. It, does, it, does it taste like sarsaparilla? Or like um, root beer? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that I would enjoy that either. Um, so there's a very popular ginger beer company in Australia called Bundaberg and then they released a Bundaberg, um, ginger beer spiced. Um, and it, I, I don't like it. It tastes like cough syrup. It's oof. 30 says it tastes like raspberry. 30. As in 30 says. Um, yeah, I, I mm, don't think... It's for me. Mm. All right. Okay. All righty. I'm his super mod. Nice. I didn't know what it, so what is involved in the super mod? You're just like the, a senior mod. I love Moscow mules, but can't drink ginger beer straight. Maybe the vodka waters it down, maybe. Maybe. I like a nice Moscow mule. Okay, so today we're going to be making um, German pancakes. I just realized my laptop's not here. Um, and, oh, Mr. Rome. Romeo has sprawled himself out in the hallway. He always lays a, along a, um, a wall. And it's a bit warm, I think. They get a haircut next week. I feel similar about dark and stormy. So you can have a dark and stormy, but you can't have ginger beer on its own. Oh my goodness. 
guys, you got to have better ginger beer. Um, it's really big now. A lot of the breweries are doing alcoholic ginger beer or hard ginger beer. It's so good. But... I have not had an alcoholic beverage since New Year's Eve. Yeah, I think. New Year's Eve? Yeah. yeah, 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 New Year's Eve was the last time. I did have those little um, tequila things, little um, grapes, but nothing since that. I had uh, uh, one or two tequila grapes. Just, just for science to show you. Okay, so we're doing German, German pancakes for Antimina. This was your redemption for Nostalgia Week. Okay, I need to blow it up because it's... So a little photo. Tequila grapes, that's it. I can end his stream if I needed and have a lot of access. Normal mods don't. Cool. There's non-alcoholic spirits I'd really like to experiment with. There are. Um, there's a bunch coming out, but they, they're quite expensive. Um, it's, I don't understand because they're trying to market them as an alternative to alcohol, but, and there's no alcohol tax, so they shouldn't be as expensive as they are. Um, uh, like you can get cans at the grocery store. So alcohol isn't sold, sold at a grocery store, but you get non-alcoholic spirits um, or like drinks. And they're still like for a four pack, 10 to $12. It's, uh, I don't know. It's it, sometimes up to $18 for a four pack of non-alcoholic drinks. Like mad, what? Okay, so German pancake, here we go. I'll go to Discord actually because I've got it, I copied your photo that you sent and I put it in my, um, in my, no, I can't even think. I put it into my menu, my menu planner for the stream. Oh, I've got it, sorry, uh, your, is my internet choppy? Yeah, 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 it's me, it's me. I just realised because I opened my laptop and then it started to sync my Google Drive. We're done. I paused it. It's paused. It's gone. It should, the bad man stopped. It should be stopped now. Is it better? Is it better? Let me know. <laughs> Thought my internet broke. Sorry. As soon as I opened my laptop, it just started syncing again. It's taking forever because it needs to sync 238, 36 more files. Sorry, are we all fixed? We're good now, thank God. We're good. Okay, German pancakes. All right, here we go. Molly saved the stream. <laughs> is it non alcoholic spirit and oxymoron? Yes, 100% it is. Okay. Okay. Um, Antimina, German pancake. Okay. Now I've got to look, search for your name because I can't find that thing. Anta. From Antimina. Guys, guys, did I, I posted a photo in Discord, but I used this heatless hair tool thing last night. What do you think of me curls? So it's a thing that's like a foam, <laughs> a foam thing, and you wrap your hair around it. It was the first time I used it properly. My hair's looking so dark at the moment. Um, my boss is 10 years old, but we got our liquor license for the restaurant, so I'd like him to not feel like left out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Finished sending Antimina. Here we go. Food and drink. Jump to this. So, three eggs, 
half a cup of flour, half a cup of milk, salt, butter and margarine. Set a clear glass pie dish. No way am I doing that using a glass pie dish. No way. No one should use pie, glass pie dishes. Don't use glass. Casserole dishes, whatever. Because they retain too much heat, especially for pies. Don't do it. I know you might want to feel like you want to, but don't do it. Okay, do I do one big one? Or I might just do multiple small ones. So, I do have a glass dish, but I don't really use it. When you're making pies, the pies need to, um, using a glass pie dish, the, the glass retains heat too much and you'll, you'll make your pie crust too dark and it'll cook the, it'll retain too much heat. But I love ca glass casserole. Well, for casserole, it just, it just overcooks stuff. So it, take it out earlier and just, it's just not recommended. I don't know why this has got something in it. Okay. So, we turn the oven on. Like that. And then, uh, meanwhile, mix the eggs. Okay, put it on the lowest shelf until it's very hot. So we call these Dutch babies. So I'm interested to see how this is different. Um, I made these for Exceed's birthday, if you guys remember. Okay, so in here, three eggs, half a cup of flour, not a lot of flour, um, I use glass dish for a chicken pie recipe but the pastry is on top, yeah, okay, doesn't cast iron also retain hot heat, is it not as much, um, what, yes, what you're saying, um, what I'm saying doesn't make sense with what I'm doing. Now, uh, let me explain myself. So, what I, I was saying an unrelated topic to what I was talking about. So, cast iron, what I'm doing now is using cast iron instead of glass because um, I don't like using glass because what's going to happen is I'm going to hit the, the recipe says to heat the pan up in the oven and we'll get it really hot and then pour room temperature liquid into it and the chance of it cracking is high even though it sometimes it, it you know it might be pyrex or whatever the, there's a cracking danger that's why i'm using cast iron for this recipe but i um thank you for allowing me to explain thank you for asking the question when it comes to pies you shouldn't use glass because they heat. You shouldn't, you shouldn't use a cast iron either for a pie, if that makes sense. Am I making, am I? So for this, I'm using cast iron because I don't want it to, a glass to crack. When I'm making a pie, I don't use glass because it, it retains too much heat and will um, uh, overcook your, your food. So I prefer to use ceramic. Um, I'm also doing an accidental cook along with Molly. Jay requested meatloaf, mac and cheese. Damn, okay. Vegetarian lard is also an oxymoron. Yeah. But it's just, it's the same as ve vegan leather. There's so many oxymorons these days. They're all like marketing terms. Um, so I grew up, my parents owned a furniture company. And we would deal with sofas and um, fabric and leather and, um, you know, bar stools, things like that. And you would have leather and you would have PU, polyurethane. And then when Tesla, I think Tesla was the first person, the first company that started like using the term or, or on a larger scale, they, they called it vegan leather. And it's, it was just, it was like, it made me laugh because it was just, it's PU. It's, if it's not leather, even though it's, good quality it's usually pu so it's not never going to last and wear the same way that leather does definitely the technology is better but um they i love the term when they call it vegan leather okay so we're going to need three eggs this recipe is it seems it's more closer to a crepe batter oh 
Guys, we got it. Um, an egg, and I think this one's rotten. So I'm gonna pop it there. And oh God, it smells so bad. Now I wanna check all these eggs again. The, the shell came off and the membrane's just intact, but it's all black. Oh God, it smells disgusting. Oh, oh God. Not been having a good run with eggs this week. Yeah, this vegan leather term makes me laugh too. That one's bobbling. <sighs> oh, he's no good. Damn it. Now I'm gonna check all these eggs. Oh, that one's bad too. He's thinking about it. He's unsure. He's sitting on the edge. Yep. Yep, he's gone too. Damn. Bah. Okay, so we need three eggs. These ones, I'm gonna have to use them up this weekend. Oh, yuck. Yuckies, 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 guys. So this is the way you check if your eggs are fresh or gone bad. You want to put them in a container of water and if they float, it means they've got an air pocket in them that's large enough and they're no good. I'm pretty sure this is a, a new one. You ideally don't want to put them in here wet either because what happens is they stick to the cardboard and they're hard to remove. Dry your eggs off. Oh. That one's bad, okay. The, the heat, so we have an air con here, but the heat, uh, the air con doesn't reach the back room. So unfortunately, um, it gets a bit warm in here and the temperature's elevated. So um, the eggs are then been in a cupboard, like in a drawer, and they've just been set off. Also be careful because it washes off bits of the outer membrane. So turn quicker after you check them. Yeah, true. All right, now I'm just gonna clean. There's a bit of spillage in the drawer. So hopefully it doesn't stink. Ugh. Okay, oven getting really hot. How many of you have heard of a Dutch baby, Puff Daddy? Dutch pancake. Okay. There we go. So, he wants us to, that one egg, two eggs, three eggs. Fabulous. Never heard of it, love the concept, but never had one. Okay. Do you have a Dutch oven, a Dutch oven, a du like a cast iron, or the, uh, you need like a sturdy, like even a fry pan, you can do one in a fry pan if, it, um, if you're okay with it getting a hot, like quite hot. 
so we're just whisking, ensure we've got no lumps, like this, and then we're gonna incorporate some, I think it's half a cup of milk, yes. Yeah, I have a cast iron. They're delicious. They're like Yorkshire pudding, but sweet, and they're crispy, and oh, so good. All right, I'm gonna I'll use oat milk. I have a Bessemer Dutch oven, nice. We used to have Bessemer when I was a kid growing up, and they were always really good. But I wouldn't even know where to buy them. Do you, are they, are they like, it's like, um, like Thermomix where you have like an, an agent or someone who, you know what I mean, like a, like a seller, like Tupperware. Giant Yorkshire pudding before, it was basically the same, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Need more milk. Hey Google, add oat milk to my shopping list. Okay, I added oat milk to the list called The shopping. ceiling business is in Thomastown or Preston. So it's a store. They have a store. Hey Google, tell me about Bessemer cookware. According to Wikipedia, Sir Henry Bessemer was an English inventor whose steel making process would become the most important technique for making steel in the 19th century for almost 100 years. He also played a significant role in establishing the town of Sheffield, nicknamed Steel City, as a major industrial center. Wow. Um, oat milk, just, it'll be a little bit creamier. You don't really tell the difference. Oat milk's delicious. This is the, the best brand, um, but it's a little bit, we'd like to get it when it's on sale. It's a bit spinny. I have Bessemer crepe pan, the type we dip the batter in, and all like that. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. So this is basically crepe batter, right? It's, it's thin. What we're going to do is we're going to um, put some butter in the fry pan while it's getting really, because now it's really hot. And then um, you're going to put butter in there and then add this, um, put it in the really hot oven. And because of the heat of the, the pan, the um, crepe batter is going to go up the sides and go really puffy. Oatly or Chobani? Yeah, um, Chobani is quite nice as well. I love oat milk. That brand is so yum. Chobani is really good too. The ultra creamy. Ultra cre oh, okay, so we've got Barista, I think. I don't know. I haven't seen an Ultra Creamy. That just referred to just it's um, less water content. Mm -hmm. All right. So... <clears throat> Um, add batter immediately, lower shelf, syrup, gem, apple sauce. How do you like to have your pancake, Antamina? I'm just going to heat the oven up a little bit higher. Um, do you guys like meatloaf? Or at least what Starbucks use before they switch brands, if I remember correctly. Okay. Okay. Uh, I... <laughs> did have oh shit no here we go we're making a mini a mini meatloaf because it's tonight blackberry jam okay and like so when I made it for exceed for his birthday we added ice cream and we made it a bit bougie more like a breakfast dessert. Um, so, let's see what temperatures this has got to. Still gonna get a bit hotter. Chobani is what they switched to. So they went from Oatly to Chobani. Okay, beware knows. Um, beware, how's your week been? Are you taking some time off 
after you, after your like are you looking for a new job have you got a new job are you looking for a new job are you just taking some time to enjoy yourself and reduce your stress levels okay so we're just gonna let that rest for a bit i'm gonna show you these buns so i'm gonna grab a tray my tray has got a bit of dried dough on it sorry for this noise okay so this is your tray I did reuse these for hot cross buns yesterday, so still a little bit dirty. But this is our dough for our ciabatta. So all I've done is taken the ingredients, which is bread flour, water, yeast, salt. Four ingredients in here. Mixed it together, comes out like this. I know because they were so much... So much smaller. Definitely have been enjoying my time off and having uh, having it slowly sink in. Actively looking, but I am actively looking already. One recruiter has always reached out. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So, what we want to do here? Sorry, I don't know what zoomed in. Zoom out. There we go. So that's our dough. And we've let it proof. And it looks like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to wet our hands. Jay has also given me some house projects. Lovely. That's good. It's good to have. Okay, so I'm just releasing these from the side of the bowl slightly. Just so that we can dump it out. So... You just want to stretch and fold like this. Go around just to release it. We don't want to deflate it too much, but you also want to be able to get it out of the, the, the bowl. Here, you can line this with baking paper if you want, um, but then we're going to add flour. We're going to add quite a bit of flour. So ciabatta translates to slipper in Italian. So that's what these look like. And they are quintessentially coated in flour with a crackly top, like this. Okay. All you wanna do is just gently release this out like that. Nice puffy dough. We're gonna, so it's quite sticky, right? So we're just gonna cover it in flour like this. And you can cut this whatever sizes you want. So if you want smaller rolls, cut it into small pieces. If you want it in one to two to four, you know, you do that. You do you, boo, okay? So I'm gonna cut it into six. Um, so I like to just, mm, yeah. Oh, I always get a bit nervous cutting things into six because then you cut it into threes and then cut it into two. Okay, so like that. Like that. Kind of want to separate it slightly from itself. It's nice and puffy. that and just separate it if you wanted to you can grab a piece and kind of stretch it out and elongate it to then make more of a a really nice kind of baguette or roll shape which is going to look like that just 
make sure it's got a little bit of flour on the top. Okay. You don't really need to add more flour um, on once you've cut it, but it's just gonna sit like that. We're gonna cover and let that sit for about 10 to 20 minutes, just to let it puff and rise more. Um, e and then we'll bake it. We'll put some steam in the oven. You can use a regular oven, but if you want a really nice crust, we're gonna put some ice blocks at the bottom of the oven and create some steam and that will create a nice, really nice crust on there. But that's so easy. So easy. So easy. What do you think? So you just, because you deflated them slightly when we were transferring the dough over, you just want to let them sit and rise a little bit extra. And then they'll get bigger air bubbles if you let them proof. To know how, if they're proofed long enough, what you want to do is press your finger in. See how it quickly springs back? So see if I press here. See how it springs back quite quickly? What, when it's proofed enough, it'll spring back slowly. If it continues to sink, when I take my finger away, then it's overproofed. But if I, um, if it springs back quickly, it means it needs longer to sit and rest. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So cover, set, and rest. Hey Google, set timer for 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes, starting now. It's gonna... Neil, we're gonna grab some butter. This is for our pancake, and I'm jumping around all the time. But we're gonna take out um, our dough, take our cast iron out, put it here, Add some butter, swirl the butter around, add our pancake batter, pop it in straight back into the oven. Easy? Is it easy? So, butter um, and swirl. Where? Okay, I'm not going to use that again. Like this. Nice and hot. Up the sides, because that's where we want it to rise. Like that. Half of this batter, give it a mix. Fabulous. Now back in the oven, ASAP. Beautiful. We'll wait for that to cook. It'll puff up the sides, hopefully. Puff up. Now we'll go from there. Easy. Oh, got myself a little bit. Hey Google, do I have a timer? Yes, you have a 10 minute timer. Fantastic. Got to check on him. Um, a reminder for those next stream is Barbecue. We are doing a fundraising stream for cancer. Uh, it's going to childhood sarcoma research uh, for Dr. Ben Wiley. Uh, we're doing bangers and bangers. So for every $20 donation to the charity, uh, you get, we cook a sausage for you. You get to choose a song for the playlist. And if we raise, our goal is to raise $1,000. If we can do that, I will swim unassisted to, you'll see where we're, we're going to be, an outdoor stream. Um, we're doing a, um, a stream at my parents' kind of patio um, across from the canal and I will swim. If we hit our goal, I will swim to the nature reservoir and back. Hopefully. <laughs> but I mean, there's always part where it's like, do I want to, do I really want to hit the goal? But it'll be fun. Thanks for doing the family recipe, Molly. No, I'm, I'm grateful that you sent it in. Thank you for your suggestion. Um, so yeah, two days, 22 hours and 58 minutes. Outdoor stream, yes. So for $20, you get a banger and a banger. So we'll uh, cook you a sausage and you get to choose a song. There'll be some silly things. There'll be milestones, costumes, Belgor. My stepdad will be there. Maybe my mum will pop in. Um, Exceed will be there too. And we're just going to have a fun, silly stream. 
Hope the weather is warm for you when you swim. I hope so too. Hey Google, what is the weather like on Monday in Mandurah? Monday in Mandura, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 25 and a low of 15. It is going to be, we're starting stream at 8 a.m. Monday so. in Mandura, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 25 Thanks. and a low of 15. I think it'll be okay. It's all for, all for a good cause. Hopefully there's no sharks. <laughs> or maybe, do we, hopefully we'll see some dolphins. The dolphins usually come by in the morning, so that would be pretty cool. If you don't come for me, come for the dolphins. Okay, we'll get our meatloaf going. I cannot stop smelling this egg. I have to take the bin out. Oh, stinks. I'll be back. Oh gosh. Okay, behave while I'm away. I'm just going out the front and put the garage up. I don't know if you guys can hear me. If you can hear me, see. If you can hear me, you chicken. Oh, yuck, it stinks. Ugh. What about chicken? A bit choppy? Not too bad, not too bad. What stinks? Um, a rotten egg, unfortunately. Oh, I burnt myself. What about chicken? You didn't, did you hear the other word? Did you hear anything else? Okay, so meatloaf. Eat chicken, sorry Molly, I'm already making meatloaf. Okay, beware, teach me how to make meatloaf. Teach, teach me how to make meatloaf. I wanna make a mini meatloaf in here. If you can hear, hear me something, something chicken. <laughs> Thanks, Nattles. How's your week been? How you been? Keeping out of trouble? Okay, that's a bread knife. This one. Look at that all get, can you see it getting fluffy? Look at it. He's puffing. He's puffing. Okay, so. Let's look at meatloaf. We're gonna need a bowl. I don't mind carrot. I'm okay to carrot. Celery, maybe? Onion? What have I got? I've got broccoli, but I don't, does broccoli belong in there? We'll use a little bit of carrot. Um, cabbage? Nah. Cabbage is a bit weird. Cabbage. Oh no, I'm actually experimenting tonight. So we used to mix. We always used a mix, but it was discontinued. Okay. I can link the recipe my mum sent me, please. So we're going to add a little bit of carrot. What is a no-go in, uh, in meatloaf? Is there something that does not belong? It's been okay, Kat's been at the vet's for surgery checkup. <gasps> She's healing just right, fantastic, that's great to hear. We had to go to the vet um, Tuesday, I think, because Chester had a, he pulled off his nail, his toenail. So the vet had to remove it. We're very lucky that he didn't have to get put to sleep. Carrot, carrots do not belong in meatloaf. 
What, okay. What else? Never had a carrot meatloaf. Have you not? Oh. Adds a bit of sweetness. I'm only using a little bit. But what, what belongs then in, in meatloaf? Help a lady out, what, what belongs in meatloaf? Oh my God, it looks so good. Okay, onions, red onion. Breadcrumbs, yes. An egg. Oh, I didn't put an egg, uh, shivers. I didn't put a thing in yet. Onion, garlic, oats, oats. Never heard of oats in a meatloaf. So you don't use breadcrumbs, you use oats. Meat, I think. Oh, I don't know. What happens if I'm vegetarian? I don't want meat in my meatloaf. Hey, Lily. I always hard boiled eggs and wrap the meatloaf around them. So you slice, oh, interesting. That's different. Okay, so I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna use oats, I don't think. I'm gonna use panko breadcrumbs. But oats does sound interesting. We've got an egg. I've checked this one, it's good. Stop. Okay. So we're gonna take this out and then we're gonna re uh, replace it with these buns. Look at that, buns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dump a whole bunch of ice blocks into the bottom of the oven, okay? Just the steam helps them rise. Can't say I've ever tried meatloaf, but there is a time for trying new. There is. Guess bell pepper. Bell pepper, does it go? Okay. Are you ready? Look at that. Look at that. Now, these are our rolls. This is the new recipe on the website for ciabatta rolls. I'm gonna put the ice the bottom of the oven. My oven's doing this fucking thing where it, the door, I think the door is broken. Uh, sorry, Chess. Oh wait, I need someone to remind me why Mario is staring at us. So the goal here, so we have a weekly goal, um, $55 a week and uh, exclamation mark goal. Uh, if you'd like to, if you've liked the stream, if you enjoyed the content, you'd like to support the channel, um, rather than subscribing or bits, uh, it's a great way to support me. My goal is to buy some new equipment and a new lens. So then, if we do it every week, um, we, we'll hit it in 39 weeks. So it's 55 bucks. We're on week three, I think. <gasps> Look at this, deflated. But it's nice and crispy on the outside. I like it with powdered sugar the best. Let's get some powdered sugar. You could add ice cream, you could add jam or jelly. the night. Only today did I get the sore throat from teleconcert. Oh, really? Look at this. Powdered sugar. Here we go. 
Yum. Yum, yum, yum. So you can eat it out of there or you can transfer it to a plate. So we'll go here, like this. Look at that. Yum. A sore throat day after? Nah, Lily, you get it four days later. You couldn't be, um, you're probably still running on adrenaline. Um, you couldn't have uh, got it from anywhere, like, you could have got run down from the concert and then been um, infected the last few days. That makes sense? All right, we're doing the last, the last one here. with a cast iron pan. Ouch. Okay, let's have a taste. Let's put a little bit of butter. You could use cream, syrup. I don't have any blackberry jam like Antamina like you recommended, but I have boysenberry jam. Ow. I burn myself. Okay. Oh, I don't, it's running out, look. There's like none in there. I don't often get sick, but my body is permanent fight or flight, so I'll keep an eye on it, fairly certain it's just a sore throat. Okay. Um, have a, I like to have, if I'm feeling a sore throat, come on. This is me, what I like to do, so you can take it with a grain of salt. But um, a little shot of apple cider vinegar, um, honey and lemon, warm water, and then have a shot of that. It'll kick the bugs before they can start to multiply. Oh, far out. Ow. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a taste. I have a wild chester on my, what on my tail? Look at this. Mmm. Yum. Oh, I like it with this jam. This is a great suggestion. This is lovely that this is nostalgic for you. Did you say your grandparents made it for you? We haven't discussed our favorite pink song. I was listening to some this morning, getting a little bit teary. Because I wanted to go for so long. And a lot of her songs are really quite emotional. Um, I'm very excited. Because, yeah, I think she's great. Mm. Guys, three eggs, half a cup of milk, half a cup of flour, a bit of salt, and then butter in the fry pan and you can make this magical they're so lovely they're crispy on the outside mmm mmm honestly I'm not sure um see money she's it's it's cold the um um the tour is cold the summer shit Summer something. I was looking at it this morning. Summer. She sings So What. Um, I really like uh, from what I, from what I, no. Let me look. Summer Carnival. Thank you very much, Demilk Squad. Summer Carnival Tour. Yes. Um... So YouTube music, there's a song that I, there's quite a few songs that I like. What do you, what about you guys? For anyone who's a fan or? Her new album's called Trustful. Um, there's a song that she wrote about her dad called, um, um, oh, 
Is it a long way to go? No. When I get there, when I get there, that's about her dad. And it's about like talking about when I get there to heaven. It's very sweet. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find some in here. So, um, there's, there's heaps of good songs. I like Beautiful Trauma was a great album. Fun House was a great album. Um, uh, the song that I was listening to this morning was, um, let me find it. It's like from what I know or something. Um, what I know so far. Hold on. I was looking at it this morning. I don't want to get it wrong. Um, all, uh, all I know so far. The only pink, pink album I know is the first one, but I know I like her later music. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry to repeat, Molly, I never got to meet my grandparents and my great, all my great grandparents on the side. Don't apologize for repeating. Thank you for reposting. Um, but my dad has always made it for me as well as meatloaf. It's been my family for three generations, excluding me. Wow. Mm -mm. These ciabatta loaves, oh my God. Oh my God. They're looking so good. I'm excited for you guys to see him. And Jimena, this is delicious. Mm. There's just something about butter on a pancake with plain sugar, like powdered sugar. Mmm. I hope it's a, a, like, I've never been able to get to a concert. I, I had tickets, my mum had tickets, and I was, I think I was naughty, or I did something. My mum, my mum's way of um, not grounding me. <clears throat> um, my parents said that I couldn't go to the concert, and I was devastated, and still now I'm devastated. And I've never been able to get the opportunity. And then I couldn't get tickets. They sold out, like, the pink, the, the, the last, I think the whole the whole tour in Australia sold out. And so I couldn't get tickets. I was looking and looking and looking. And then they were really expensive, but um, very gratefully um, received a tip and suggestion from Kerry to buy tickets. I love old school pink. Most girls don't let them get me, just like a pill, nostalgia factor. Um, and then um, family portrait, like Dear Mr. President. Uh, there's beautiful traumas, really good. Stupid girls from um, from the album. I'm not dead. Like that was that was a banger. Mm. Yeah, everyone should try this. Mm. You and your hand alone. I'm, yeah, leave me alone. I'm lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to eat this all. I'll give the other one to exceed. So if you if you cook it longer and it gets crispier, then it kind of keeps its shape for a little bit longer, but eventually will deflate. My hair's in my way, it's annoying. Tell me more about the meatloaf. Do you guys like ketchup? Do you like gravy, barbecue sauce? Mmm. Yeah, two hours. Two to two and a half hours, I heard.
Okay. I'm done now. Mm. They smell incredible. Mm. <clears throat> Just give me a reason. It's a lovely song. And she's got a new song with my marshmallow, yeah. Ketchup. I'm not usually a ketchup fan, but meatloaf, you has to have it. Interesting. Two of my sisters like ketchup on their meatloaf. I don't. Ketchup and Worcestershire baked top like a glaze, then serve with must. What type of mustard, though? What type of mustard? No ketchup, says Antamina. So a few people said barbecue sauce. But barbecue... <laughs> Barbecue sauce is basically a, a, a ketchup that's just been caramelised with more sugar and a bit more stuff in it. So, like, I, I usually prefer... I don't really like ketchup either, but I don't really like the sugar, con the sweetness of barbecue. But to get a barbecue, you've got to start with a tomato-based sauce. All right. So I'm only going to add a little bit of this carrot... Put this American mustard, okay? Interesting. So it's like basically like a, a burger then. So just really finely chopping this carrot. Meatloaf is not a thing in Australia. We have rissoles, which is basically meatloaf, but in like a patty form. You would, you would agree with that, Australians, wouldn't you say? A rissole is basically meatloaf in patty form. What about, hey, hold on, what about grated carrot? No, grated, um, grated potato in a meatloaf. Like, I think that would be fire. What do we think? Potato in meatloaf. Hey Google, can I add potato to meatloaf? On the website taste.com.au, they say, combine mince, onion, carrot, zucchini, rosemary, beaten egg, breadcrumbs, sauces and mustard in a large bowl. Use your hands to mix well. Press mince mixture into prepared pan and smooth the top. top That's not potato. what I want. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of potato. Oh, got makeup. Coming. Chester. Hello. How are you going? Good, how are you? Good. Yeah. for you. Fab. Oh, thank you very much. There you go. Amazing. Have a great weekend. You too. What have we got? What is this? Oh, guys, I got a treat box. That's cool that it arrived on stream. This month's treat box. It's a little bit late because it was supposed to be, it's supposed to be February and it's now March, but whatever. Did you intentionally get the Wonder Woman vibes with the beautiful hair? Oh, thank you. Thanks, Simo. Um, it's actually the only the pink clothing that I own. Just give me a reason. Just to... Sorry, Chess. And then I got this. I don't know what this is. We got this. Treat great. I don't know what this is. It won't rip. What do you think, Chuby? What is this? <laughs> this, is, this is an exceed thing. Does anyone know what these are? Do you know what this is? If you are a gardening person that gardens, you might know what these are. Whipper snipper blades, they are. He bought them in bulk. Because um, he was whippersnippering on the weekend and we ran out, but then they're so much cheaper. I know they're whippersnipper blades. But thank, you for, thank you for saying I have nice hair. 
Okay, let's see what this month is. Do you want to see now or do a meatloaf first? Do we want to get distracted with snacks? Or should we, we'll just, we leave it to the meatloaf's in the oven. Cheaper wire version, we, we, are we, we only have a bladed whipper snipper. I would like to get one, um, I'd like to get one that has the wire. The plastic cord, yeah. Oh, well, I don't know, I think they're better. I, I think I've heard that the, the corded ones are better. So this is a gift from Exceed. We have one more month after this. The first month was, do you remember? What the first month of Treat Crate was? The cord is fiddly for me to bother with, yeah? I had to Google a whippersnipper. Okay, so sorry, a weed whacker. Sorry, yes, a weed whacker, we call it a whippersnipper. A whippersnipper. Whippersnipper. Does anyone remember what the first month of Treat Crate was? We have, this is our second, we've got one more box after this. It was a Christmas present from Exceed. All whippersnappers with their whippersnippers, this is it. Old people in America call kids whippersnapper when they think uh, young and inexperienced. But it's not whippersnapper, it's whippersnipper. You snip, you snip the weeds. A whippersnipper, not a, a whippersnapper. Yeah, we say that as well. Oh yeah, he's a young whippersnapper. But we're, it's not a whippersnapper, it's a whippersnipper. Scissors snip, snip, with a snip. We call them weed eaters. Interesting, I like that, makes sense. Because they don't eat weeds. I don't know why, because they don't eat weeds. But oh, I Googled whippersnapper, whippersnipper. Whipper snipper, weed whacker. I like weed whacker. Weed whacker makes the most sense because whipper snipper doesn't. It does whip around and it does snip, but weed whacker does exactly what it says it does. I think my favorite part of the stream is when we talk about what we call things. Yeah. I think that happens quite a lot and I love it as well, where we have discussion about. I call it GIF, you call it GIF, you call it a weed whacker, I call it a whippersnipper, you call it ketchup, I call it tomato sauce, you call it pudding, but I call it custard, you call it biscuit, I call it a scone, but I also have a biscuit that is different to the old biscuit that has also got a different name. Um, it's always, it's very confusing, some of the stuff. Like British, we was having this discussion, discussion like just this morning. So UK call it pudding, we call it dessert, but a pudding is also a cake that's cooked in like a casserole dish, um, but then they cover it in custard, but you guys call it pudding, but it's like a, 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 a liquid, liquid, a uh, thick liquid that you pour over cake. I feel personally targeted by this because I like to compare those. We call your dog Chester, you call him Choo Choo. This is true. I do. No one has answered my question. Does anyone remember the treat crate? Does anyone remember the treat crate? I'm going to wash my hands. I'm waiting for this thing to come out of the oven. I haven't heard any crate in years. Wasn't it Japan? Nope. It, 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 it was like Japan because we had the, the cake that was kind of like a chiffon cake. But it wasn't exactly Japan. It was close. It was in Asia. It was, has Asia in the name. That's a clue. This knife is no good. Indonesia, Malaysia, yeah, it was Malaysia. So 
Month one was Malaysia. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's not all Asian countries because I'd like some diversity. I, I've been to a lot of Asian countries already and a lot of the, the, the snacks are shared. My dad's actually coming back from Thailand and he's gonna hope, he said that he's gonna try and bring me some snacks because I was telling him about the treat crate. Winner, winner, meatloaf dinner. You were close. Indonesia, Malaysia, very close to each other. Okay. Onion. Uh, I'm going to add some carrot. Uh, not carrot. Far out. If I say carrot one more time, I'm going to scream. I'm going to add a potato. A potato. I'm just hesitant of putting too many veggies in. Of like, so I've got... I've got a whole chopping board of more. I will not say that word. Oh my God, when is pink? Tonight. So we're going to um, sushi train for dinner. Um, and then, then pink starts, uh, well gates open at five and the show starts at 6.40 it says. So they've got two, they've got a band and then Tones and I, which is a, another performer as um, kind of warm-up artists and then Pink comes on. So what are you doing here? Go have fun. What do you mean? It's about ages. It's only 9.30. I've got to figure out what I'm wearing. Um, Pink isn't the band. Well, she's not really a band. She's a performer, isn't she? Tones and I is so good. I hope so. I was saying to Exceed this morning that I hope she's good because, like, when you listen to her songs, it sounds like there's a lot of, um, what do you say, like, uh, production in her songs. But I don't know if that's just her natural voice. It's quite, her voice is quite distinct, quite incredible. Post-production, yeah. Producing. Uh, what am I trying to think of? This one, I got this one a little bit darker. She dang, sang in the grand final, she was definitely live and she did an amazing job. Oh, cool. Look at this. Yum. Yum, yum. Okay. I'll play some music for you later and see what you think. She's exceptional. Um, her love honestly isn't too far. Her love? Her live? Okay. So I don't have any ketchup. So we're gonna use some tomato sauce. I'm gonna make my own ketchup. Okay. Typical Molly style. We're gonna we're gonna do our own thing. There's like this this ketchup can is like empty. But you don't add it in here, do you? You add it on top. Is that correct? Most singers sing a few songs through and then they rest that back up. But Taylor wouldn't do that. Would she? She performs for three and a half hours. I... What about you? Except Taylor. Molly wouldn't do that. I'm here for five hours with my own voice. Sometimes I change accents, but I never change voices. Taylor is in a league of her own. But, okay. Uh, this is maybe an unpopular opinion. Taylor doesn't really sing her songs. She does more speaking, like more talking. Like I wouldn't say she can sing, definitely she can sing, but I feel like Sailor, Taylor's style is more talking with a little bit of a, like a singing twang to it. Do you know what I mean? 
because the way that it sh like the way that she describes like sings her does her songs it's more of a story it's storytelling yeah but it's not like I think it's easier on her vocal cords and she can perform for a longer period of time because of the style of it she has a great like vocal range but I think her why didn't I I didn't add any spices yet and I put both gloves on she still has backup and auto tune everything else like everyone else does yeah of course but I'm saying like a, a Taylor can sing for three hours or Eris two hour every night because I think her, her vocal style is le less pressing on her vocal cords, maybe. That's just from my, maybe my, I don't know much about it. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. But like compared to like Whitney Houston or someone who has like a really big high notes and like, you know, big ballads and things like that, that isn't really Taylor's style. Okay, so into here we're having salt. We've got one dog here, one dog here. Pepper. Peppercorn. She has an incredible range, but I think people don't realize that because she doesn't show it up. Yeah, 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 that's what I think. That's what I'm saying. Is that like when, she, like for the heiress tour, she didn't use that vocal range as much. She does more of a singing, like a, a singing speak. And that she is definitely very talented and, and like incredibly skilled. But for, for three and a half, she, like the three and a half hour tour, the songs that she's chosen don't showcase much of that and they allow her to sing for longer. I think at that level they're all, to, oh, 100%, yeah, agree. Could almost be considered spoken word singing, yeah. But like um, M. Potter said, it's like, it's, it is definitely um, storytelling. I remember seeing Avril Lavigne in concert in Melbourne and I loved it. Then as I was driving home, all reports came out, there was auto-tuned and I was so disappointed. See, I, I've been to play, um, concerts and things like that or, or seen stuff where, you know, it comes out, but like at the, in the moment, you've got to remember how you felt at the moment. And like, if you didn't hear or you didn't know that she was auto-tuned or lip syncing or whatever, then try and remember that. Try and remember the feeling. Because like, sometimes people just like to hate on people and they, it's not actually true. You know what I mean? Yeah, you loved it in the moon, morning. Worcestershire. Okay. So we've got panko, we've got eggs, salt, pepper, a little bit of sauce. I'm so excited for this. Like I don't, the idea of meatloaf isn't huge on my love list, but having, wash your sister sauce, that's it. Um, but having potato in it, I think it's taken up a level for me. All right, we're just gonna pop it in here. Oh, you know what we should do? Add some must MSG. that someday there we go Ooh. speaking of tones yeah this is tones and i just singing oh so this is the girl that is gonna be we're gonna see live tonight um who did i see so the band that i've seen last I think we saw Blink-182 when we were um, in San Diego. They performed at TwitchCon in 2019. That was really cool. Um, Travis is very, very talented. Holy heck. Um, who have I seen in concert? I saw Katy Perry. Best concert I've ever been to? Probably Mumford & Sons. If you like indie, indie, like, folk Style, like, I, I don't know what kind of genre they would be classed as, but oh my goodness, Mumford and Sons, incredible. 
Edward Sharp and the Electric... Edward Sharp and the Electric Zeros, is that what it's called? They are amazing as well. They were um, supporting act for Mumford & Sons. I saw them out in an outdoor amphitheatre. That was really cool. Coldplay was fantastic. The first time I went, I didn't get to go last time. I saw Blink-182 last night. It was so good. Amazing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. My friend saw Blink-182 in Melbourne. Well, first time Travis has come to Australia in a long time. Good he can get on a plane now. Yeah. That, uh, just the th For those that don't know, like Travis Barker was in a, an, um, a plane crash, nearly died. And the resilience and ability to get through that and overcome is incredible. Okay. So we're going to make a little sauce. Oh, these look so good. Guys, do you want to see my bread? Oh, that's really hot. I love Bling Landed 2 since I was a teen. It was really good life. Unfortunately, it wasn't with Mark Hopper um, when we saw him because they weren't together then. Like, they just recently got back together. Um, Mark Hopper's... Um, but it was still... It was an amazing show. Look at this bread! This is the new recipe on the website. Look at this. Yum! Don't they look good? Wait, don't you mean Tom? Oh no, Mark was in it before. Yeah, 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 I mean Tom. I mean Tom. Mark was there, Tom wasn't. Sorry, you are correct, Dex. I was getting confused. Mark was there, but Tom wasn't. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom came back. Oh, sorry, I did forget. Hey, Nita, welcome in. This is the website recipe that just came on line. This is the five-minute ciabatta rolls. Amazing. I think Mark, Mark is... Yes, he has. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom. My bad. Thank you, Roselli. Okay, so we've got a bit of tomato. We're going to add some barbecue sauce. It's Jack Daniels barbecue. I just knocked over the Worcestershire. It's going everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Worcestershire. Did the treat vet give you a treat for being such a good boy? That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. So. The central bank on. What did you say, Nita? Did you say you're at the vet? Okay. Mmm, yum. I'm a good girl. And also, we still haven't seen the vet. What's happening? What's happening? Someone eating something? Pooping? Okay, I'm just gonna blend this on low speed, okay? Which one's low? This one. No. In Australia, I don't know, this is just me. Um, this is me. Baked beans are solely for breakfast. Unless you, you go to like an American barbecue, like then beans are solely for breakfast. But more and more these days, more and more these days, like I have beans, I make shakshuka with beans in it and you have that anytime. Hope it all goes well, Nido. For oh, sure. Okay. Ready? Like that. Am I doing it right? Goes over like a glaze. And then into the oven. 
Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We have been streaming for one hour and 47 minutes. We have done last time on all things food. We've made bread from the new website recipe. Um, we have done German pancakes, Dutch baby pancakes. Um, and now we're doing meatloaf. We're about to go through the treat crate. That's your 30 second recap. I'll turn the oven off. Done. 20 seconds. Okay, look at this bread. Oh, guys, check out my bread. I didn't do good shaping for these ones. Okay. Can you hear this? Listen to this. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Guys, easiest bread recipe ever. Before Vegemite. I haven't had Vegemite. I go months without eating Vegemite. Do you know that? Because I don't eat a lot of bread recently. When do you remember we were in a heyday of sourdough? I was eating bread every day, making a loaf of bread like every day, every second day. I had to like go cold turkey. Mmm. This is so good. Yum. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's the stuff due right now with midterms. I fly out to Seattle next week. What are you doing in Seattle? That's exciting. Bacon, chicken, waffle. Mmm. Pink is tonight. Look. Oh. They've dropped a bit, but I used my wrap thing yesterday. I am hyped. Look how curly it is. I, I didn't do it as good as I could. Like, I, I'm just learning. But I'm happy how it turned out. It's basically that you guys will laugh. I'll go and get it and I'll show you what the tool is. Um, so I got it from Timu, but you can get it from Target. String? What do you mean I have a string in my hair? What do you mean? Where's string? Anyway, so this goes like that, and then you use a clip and you clip it on, and you get a pair. Um, piece of hair and you wrap it around underneath and you get another piece of hair and wrap it around the other way. And you just like, you put your hair and it ends up looking like a soaker. You got like two braids, kind of like two braids down the side of your hair. You literally look like a soaker. And it is, it's a foam pool noodle, yeah, similar. Um, but you can do it with a, the, like a, you know, the, the sash of a robe. You can do it with that as well. Hello. 
What's Ahsoka? Ahsoka as in Star Wars Ahsoka? Ashoka? Super Ahsoka. But I'm excited. I'm very keen for sushi tonight and then pink. And we're going to get home around... The, the, the show finishes around 10.30, I think. Uh, and we're going to get home around midnight. So that's going to be fun. What's Ahsoka? Nothing. What's Ahsoka with you? You guys are crazy. Okay, pull this away or to the side. Let this magical. Okay, so let's check out the treat. The boys will not be happy with you. That's ex the first thing Exceed said last night that the boys are going to be very upset. The other time, the other day we went out. Oh, yeah, we went out at midnight. Oh, we went out at 10 o'clock and we got home at 4.30 in the morning because we went to emergency. The dogs were not happy. They didn't understand what time it was, if they were supposed to be excited or supposed to be sleepy. It took ages to settle them. But, um, except look what arrived. What is it? I don't know yet. We're going to open it and see it up. Do you want some bread? Some rolls? No. Seeds all breaded out. Okay, let's have a look. So this is month number two of three. I hear the voice. He's hanging out the washing. Okay. So Exceed bought me three months of treat crate, which I think is really cool. Um, it's a really awesome gift. It was for Christmas. Okay. We can take bets. Should we, should we take bets of what, what country it is? Can you please turn the music down a bit? Is it too loud, guys, for other people? Maybe we can do a poll in chat. Do you like the music uh, level? Does it need to come down? Um, we can't do it from here. Maybe just the song. See how we go. It might be just that song. Okay. I think, mm, I don't know if it's just going to be Asia. I'll, I'll open it and you guys. Delicious. Yes. And Potsa just fun at pink. tipped $10 towards the goal and said, have fun at pink. Thank you very much. Why are they different colours? They were, I don't know. They were different colours on the packet. Mm. The, um, whippersnipper, uh, I said whippersnipper and people thought I said whippersnapper. And then, do you know what they call it in the US? What? A weed whacker. Oh, yeah. I've or um, a weed whacker or a weed eater. Weed eater. Weed eater. Can this be true? I'm from any country, I'm not sure. Big spoon or little spoon? Uh, big spoon. Okay. All right. The music has been a bit louder than you at times. Okay. We might turn it down a little bit. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. I'm going to check it and I'll tell you. I think it can come from anywhere. It's not that I'm disappointed. It, it's... Look what country... She's disappointed. It's not Malaysia. That was last month. Why are you disappointed here? <laughs> I actually thought... A lot of people in chat would love that. I know, I know they would love that. It's not Australia. I actually thought it was Australia. I, I, I was disappointed because I, I thought it was Australia. Knife, please. You want a knife now? Go. Catch. Okay. <laughs> okay. It would be cool from Africa. This month is, I don't know if it's an international company. It isn't USA. That would be cool. It is, Canada would be cool. It is New Zealand. So treat crate New Zealand, but I might not have had these. So I'm, I'm pretty keen. 
Oh, 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 okay. So, New Zealand. <clears throat> oh, it tells me the treats, what, they, what they're called. That's pretty cool. Hey there, and welcome to the New Zealand crate. If this is your first treat crate ever, welcome. We're so thrilled to have you on board. For your existing subscribers, we truly hope you're enjoying your snacking adventure with us so far. This month, we visit our neighbours in the land of even more down under in New Zealand, otherwise known as the land of the long white cloud. Although our friendly neighbours are so close to us, you'll see that their treats are all quite a, have quite a unique twist to them and we're so excited for all you to experience the taste of New Zealand. As always, we love hearing from you, so please don't hesitate to say hi to us on Instagram. Happy snacking. So, let me read you some things about New Zealand. Capital city is Wellington. The currency is the New Zealand dollar. Population 4.935 million. Uh, official languages are English, Te Roa Māori, uh, uh, is it Te Roa Māori, and New Zealand Sign Language, New, uh, NZSL. Nice. Uh, Prime Minister is R Christopher Luxon. Luckily, they did in a few months ago. He doesn't have a type, it's been updated. So Christopher Luxon is the Prime Minister, no longer Jacinta. Um, government type, unitary parliamentary, unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy. Yeah, say that a few times fast. Can't even say it slow. Religion, predominantly Christian. Okay. Um, as can be seen in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which is basically just a 12-hour long infomercial showcasing the beauty of New Zealand, New Zealand is best known all over the world for its incredible scenery, ranging from sweeping mountains to vast underground caves, gigantic glaciers to boiling hot springs, golden sand beaches to rugged coastlines. Being the southernmost country in the world, its isolation from the rest of the world means it has developed unique animal and plant life, particularly its bird species. Another unique aspect of New Zealand's culture is their Polynesian roots are still very evident and celebrated today, despite most of its population coming from European descent. The first inhabitants of New Zealand in the 1300s were Polynesian. Oh my God, the power just went off. The stream, the... What the fuck? Everything else is on, but the TV's off. Oh, the stream's still on. Oh my God, you're still here. Lucky I didn't swear or say anything bad. Oh my goodness. You're still on. The power looks on to me. My, my, some reason, the TV just turned off. Oh my goodness. Luckily I didn't swear or, or say anything bad. It flashed for a moment. The, my, probably an auto timer. 10 o'clock. Yeah. Weird. Um, we're all good. The TV turned off. I thought the TV broke. Thank God. I've had this TV, I bought this TV like 11 years ago. Touch wood that it doesn't break. Thank you, <laughs> luckily you weren't like fuck, uh, thank fuck, I hate you guys. <laughs> um, the camera did just look like it changed color wise. Maybe it's just my eyes though. Yeah, I saw it too, okay. Weird. What's all, everything's all, all okay, so we'll continue. You interested? Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. First inhabitants in the Polynesian were known known now as the Maori people, who celebrate ten who represent not celebrate. They represent ten percent of the New Zealand population. Uh, okay. Fun facts about New Zealand: the world's longest name for a place exists in New Zealand. It's a hill called. Not pronouncing it. Wow. Wow. 
Taumata, wa, Watatangi, Hangi, Kua, Otomata, Teupokai, Wena, Tua, Wanakana, Tawi. That's all one word, by the way. I did pronounce it. What's the name? It seems short. Two New Zealand rescue dogs were taught to drive a car around a track in order to prove the intelligence of shelter animals. In 2006, the Queen, the Governor General, the PM, the Speaker of the House and the Chief Justice were all women, making New Zealand the only country in the world to date where the highest positions have all simultaneously be held by women. Actually, we don't have the longest place name in the world anymore. Who took it? This is pretty up to date. Okay, the Lord of the Rings trilogy pumped in 200 million in the, uh, the country's economy, economy, economy. The New Zealand government even created a minister for the Lord of Rings to ensure the most money could be made from the films. Wow. Um, New Zealand is listed as a state of Australia in Australian constitution and can join the Australian Confederation if it chooses. I didn't know that. Hey, interesting. The New Zealand, New Zealand is listed as a state of Australia in the US Australian constitution. Wow. Um, kiwi fruit, also known as the Chinese gooseberry, actually originated from China. It was named after the New Zealand kiwi bird due to the resemblance in its appearance. Okay. New Zealand in numbers. Last habit hab habitable, 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 last habitable land mass to be populated. Every, for every one person in New Zealand, I don't know why I'm yelling, for one person in New Zealand, there are six sheep. That's why they call them the sheep shaggers. Um, first country in the world to give women the right to vote. First country in the world to welcome each new day, because they, they get the new day from, you know, the, the furthest... Uh, new, next to the dateline, is that how it works? Um, first, the world's least corrupt country. I don't, is, is that debatable? Is that, how is that proven? The world's clearest lake, Nelson's Blue Lake. World's first commercial bungee jump. Um, world's steepest road. World's highest human to animal ratio, 1 to 20. Monkeys? Oh, well, there's a monkey moat next to it. World's most Olympic gold medal wins per capita. Uh, most Scottish pipe bands per capita. Largest number of bookstores per capita. Largest number of golf courses per capita. Largest number of boats per capita. Um, in Auckland, one in three people own a boat. Largest number of penguin species. Very cool. Okay. More people die in New Zealand each year playing what than scuba diving. More people in New Zealand each year die playing arm wrestling, lawn bowls or hide and seek than scuba diving. More people in New Zealand die each year playing arm wrestling Lawn bowls or hide and seek than scuba diving? I don't know what the answers are. I was going to say rugby, hide and seek, Fortnite. <laughs> uh, it is um, lawn bowls, B lawn bowls. More people die in New Zealand each year playing lawn bowls than scuba diving. It's probably the old people having a heart attack. What do you think? New Zealand high schools and universities are permitted to keep a pound of uranium or thurium for educational purposes. However, there is a something fine if it explodes. New Zealand schools and universities are permitted to keep a pound of uranium or thorium for educational purposes. However, there is either A, 1 million, B, 500,000, or C, 50,000 dollar fine if it explodes. A 
So uh, New Zealand schools are allowed to keep uranium or thorium for educational purposes. Do they get a million dollar fine, a $500,000 fine or a $50,000 fine if it explodes? Any ideas? How hard did they play? Well, lawn balls, yeah, I'm just thinking maybe hard to tax because they're old, aren't they? Lawn balls doesn't sound like a tasty lunch. Um, it is indeed a $1 million fine if it explodes. In 1990, the New Zealand Prime Minister appointed a national what? A national dog, a national wizard, a national Jedi. In 1990, the New Zealand Prime Minister appointed a national dog, a national wizard, or a national Jedi. In 1990, the Prime Minister appointed a national dog, a national wizard, or a national Jedi. No worries, see you, Nito. It was indeed a national wizard. There are giant carnivorous animal eating something living in New Zealand. There are giant carnivorous uh, sheep, birds, or snails living in New Zealand. There are giant carnivorous what living in New Zealand? Sheep, bird, or snails? Kerry says snails, beware says birds. There are giant carnivorous birds, sheep, or snails living in New Zealand. I don't know about this. The answer is snails, all thumbs for now, yeah. And Kerry, New Zealand has carnivorous snails. Sounds scary. There are no something in New Zealand. There are no bats, donkeys, or snakes in New Zealand. There are no bats, donkeys, or snakes in New Zealand. There are no snakes. How can that be? No snakes at all. There are no snakes. No snakes in New Zealand. That's crazy. Wow. Okay. So let's look at our treats in the treat crate while we wait for our meatloaf to cook. Are you ready? So we have something in here called rations. Rations, the kiwi snack sensation, these uniquely shaped corn snacks pack a spicy punch that kiwis can't resist. Whether you're craving a crunchy snack or a fiery flavor adventure, rations deliver every time. Interesting, cheesy bacon attack. Okay, is that the best flavor? Okay. The next one is Wonka Fabulous Sherbet Fizz. Um, bursting with fruity flavor and fizzy excitement, the treat that ignites your taste buds with joy. Dive into the fizzy fun with a classic clan candy from Down Under. Okay. Fabulicious. Interesting. Palm oil free. Nice. So it's sherbet. Sherbet. Okay. This is a classic. I, I've been to New Zealand and we went to Cookie Time. So I have had these before. Um, these are chocolicious chunk cookies. So cookie time cookies, the ultimate kiwi indulgence. These cookies are loaded with chunks of cookie, chocolate and baked to perfection, uh, creating a gooey decadent treat. No wonder they've been a kiwi favorite since 1983. So cookie time is kind of like a store. It's kind of like a Starbucks for cookies. You go in there, they make amazing, um, fresh cookies. They make 
um, milkshakes and it's just amazing. And then you can buy the cookies as well. You put them in the microwave. Oh, okay, I have to try that. So that is a cookie time cookie. What else we got next? A pinky. So pinky, what does it say? 50% less fat. Um, so these are from Cadbury. Who would have thought fluffy pink marshmallow and chocolate would be so, well, work so fantastically? The pinky bar is a soft pink marshmallow center topped with caramel and covered in Cadbury dairy milk chocolate. Okay. All right, then we've got these thing called Fruity Bursts. There's three of them, okay. Pascal Fruit Bursts, the Juicy Kiwi Candy Treat, bursting with fruity flavor like strawberry, orange, and blackcurrant. Um, looks like we've got blackcurrant, orange, and lemon. Um, chewy bite with a tasty explosion. Pascal has been sweetening New Zealand since 1932. Amazing. Cookie time, why is it not biscuit time? Because cookies, cookies have like mix-ins. Biscuits are like are harder and like cookies are more like indulgent, I think. Okay, what have we got next is a pixie. I've never heard of nearly all of these. The only one I've heard of is this. So I am impressed with this. Pixie caramel. Okay, pixie caramel, the candy. Kiwi Candy Classic, a chewy delight with a rich caramel flavour loved by New Zealanders of all ages. Did you know Pixie Caramel has been sweet treat in the home since 1930s? Okay. All right. All right, second last is this. Chocolate Fish. Chocolate Fish, the New Zealand sweet, is a quirky twist. These marshmallow treats are coated in chocolate and often given as rewards for a job well done, making the beloved symbol of encouragement and appreciation. I thought this is a perky nana, um, which is like a chocolate caramel thing. Sorry, jandal. Look at the jandals. So we call these thongs. In New Zealand, they call them jandals, but you might call them sandals or flip-flops. They call, they call them jandals. Okay, and then this is the bottom, this is ra ra Raro, Raro, There's, it's a three pack, Island Groove, Sweet Mandarin, oh they're three flavours, Mandarin, Orange and Pineapple, so Raro, the iconic uh, Kiwi drink mix, available in a variety of flavours, a staple in Kiwi pantries from making refreshing drinks on hot summer days, mixed with water and in Enjoy a taste of New Zealand sunshine. Raro sachet. Raro? Raro. I'm quite disappointed, really. How come? It's like Kool-Aid, I assume so. All right. Let's make some Raro. Looks like tang. I assume it is. What flavor should we do? Mandarin, navel, orange, or pineapple? What's the best? I like mandarin flavored things. Coconut ice on the background. Put a can of sweetened condensed milk in a large pot, stir in the pack of Raro and st stir over very low heat until the Raro has dissolved in the mixture. Ooh, yuck. And sprinkle on desiccated coconut. No, not doing that. Mandarin, I think let mandarin. It's gonna be mandarin. Navel orange is the classic flavor, okay. Let's go Mandarin. <clears throat> some cold water, some ice. Desiccated coconut. Eats the desecrated coconut. I'm a big fan of Mandarin and grapefruit. They're probably one of my two fla favorite flavors. Okay. Oh, me legs are really sore from the gym yesterday. This week I've gone hard. Heaps of deadlifts. Okay, Mandarin. The sweet that is iconic to New Zealand isn't there. You mean the perky nana? What is the iconic treat? Azure and Sin.
my favorite. Oh, this just looks like you're pouring sugar in there. How many of you guys have had this? Delirium, are you originally from New Zealand? Oh, this just tastes like cordial. Just what every growing boy or girl needs. Oh, and do you know what it tastes like? Barocca. Like, a, a, like an orange Gatorade. It's, it's got like no flavor. I'm gonna keep having, adding some more. Metamucil. Nah, it's more like hydrolyte, kind of. That does not taste like Mandarin at all. God, I'm adding so much. So much sugar. So, oh my God, there's, oh my God. Okay, there's five, listen, listen to this. There's five servings per package, five in here. There's five servings. Each serving has 15 grams of sugar. Each serving. That's like 75 grams of sugar in here. It makes a liter. Damn. It is really refreshing though. It tastes really good. It would be really nice on a hot day. It's like cordial. Oh, this reminds me of my childhood. Like orange cordial. When you're at school. Have a day worth of carbs in one drink. Mm. It's quite nice. <laughs> but let's just not think about the sugar in it. Very cool. I like the idea. Okay. Um, what should we do next? Rations? I feel like we should leave the rations to last because they're savory, everything else is sweet. Okay. I'm not a big fan of sherbet or raspberry. I made a bottle of Rara this morning. Nice. What's your favorite flavor? Ooh. Okay. This is called a Fabulicious Sherbet Fizz. It smells terrible. Ugh. Nice. No, it just smells like, like fake stuff, but maple orange or mandarin is my favorite. Okay. It's like that. Still trying to figure out how many people die from lawn bowls. Okay. I'm gonna be pinging today. Oh God, it's so sour. Oh. Oh, it's sour. Ah. I like the texture of it though. Mmm, I really like chewy things. It's quite pleasing, except for the sour. Oh! Oh! Hold on, okay. I like it. I like it. Mmm. I like the texture. It's like a, a raspberry licorice type thing. With sherbet. And the sour makes your mouth water. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Ugh. 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 Okay. Next one. Um, do we... You want to do pinky, which is marshmallow, which I'm not really excited for. Pixie caramel. 
or the chocolate fish or fruit bursts, which is sherbet. Ooh, banana. I'm not a fan of banana flavored things. That's, that's Rick Seed. Wild berry or orange fruit burst. Oh, I thought that was lemon. I was excited. I thought that was lemon. We might do this one first, but will you guys vote next. Chocolate fish, pixie caramel or pinky, which is a chocolate covered marshmallow with caramel. This one's just caramel, a caramel bar covered in chocolate, I think. I'm not really sure about this. I, eat, I'm, I, I think it's like a, um, what is, oh, no, I forget the name. What is the, the lattice Australians? The Cabri like lattice covered in chocolate. Oh, I keep thinking it's a white and purple bar. Curly Whirly. That's what I'm thinking, Curly Whirly. Is this like a Curly Whirly? The fish is also marshmallow. For the sake, I'll vote for the pixie. Okay. All right, I'm going to try this orange fruit burst. Look this. Okay. That's what it looks like. It like it's like a starburst. I got scary eyebrows when I got that. Mmm. It just tastes like an orange starburst. I just don't want to eat heaps of sugar. It's okay. I don't mind it. Like if it was. Oh, it, it was at like a, a party or something and I wanted a snack, this would be okay. I like the chewiness. This is my favorite so far. Okay, fish. You want me to go fish? We've got one vote for fish, one vote for pixie. Let's go the fish. Chocolate covered marshmallow fish. Okay, it's an actual, it's one fish. Okay, what flavor is it? Just like regular marshmallow? Look at that, that's really cute. Okay. Oh, it's very soft. Oh, it's very soft. If it's very soft. Hmm, it's okay. Not terrible. It's nice that it's covered. Mmm. Not like a Milky Way. I think it's like strawberry flavored. I don't really know. It's colored. Hmm. I think it's, it tastes like a little bit fruity. I don't really know. It's just sweet, very sweet. Um, not like a, it's, it's um, more firm and more gelatinous than the Milky Way. Milky Way is more like nougat. Okay, next one we're going to do the pinky because I'm going to keep, I feel like I'm excited for the, pink, um, the pixie most. And we're going to go... Um, marshmallow to marshmallow. So this is obvious, like the difference between this, this is milk chocolate, whereas that looks like a darker chocolate. Like see how dark that is. Ooh, oh, this one's got caramel. Okay. S very similar color though. But then this one's milk chocolate and then covered with caramel. Very spongy. So sweet. The darker one is called a fish, chocolate fish. And then this one is called a pinky. Um, I, I think I prefer this one. Cause it's like the caramel notes to it. Mm, 
I don't know. This one tastes like, oh, I'm just chewing it like, I've had a tiny bit and my teeth hurt from all the sugar. I bet, oh. Jesus. Mm. Yeah, they're both kind of different to each other. They're like, yeah. I, I, I don't know, I like the darker chocolate with this one. This one, I like the caramel, but this one's really sweet. This one's a bit more chewy, this one's a bit fluffier. Oh. I'm looking forward to this because I like savory better than sweet. So I'm looking forward to finishing with them. All right, second last. Um, the cookie is just a chocolate chip cookie. We, I don't, I'm not gonna eat this today. We'll eat it at another time. We'll put it in the microwave, okay? Pixie bar. It is a New Zealand pack, yes. So it just looks like that. Go back in, go back in please. Excuse me, go back in, go back in. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so it's like, it's like toffee. Caramel. It's called a pixie caramel bar. Okay. Okay. You can't really taste the caramel. The chocolate is really overpowering. It's like a dark chocolate. It is nice. But the chocolate is the dark chocolate is really overpowering the caramel. Mmm. I don't mind it. I think this is my favorite chocolate one. I still really like the sherbet. I think the sherbet has done it for me. I usually don't really like fruity candies. Mm, I like the tower. I don't think I can eat this in public, though. It's like sweet, sweet, sweet. Sour, sour, sour. Like, if I'm into it, you're like, mmm, raspberry licorice, yum. Mmm. Sour, sour, sour. Oh, oh. Okay, it's good again. Oh. Oh my god! Oh, it's nice. I like that. The pixie caramel comes in second. Um, I would say oh, the pink. Mm, I don't know. I don't love them. I probably never have them again. But I'd probably say the chocolate fish and then the pinky. The pinky was way too sweet. Oh no, we're gonna vote these. Um, the stub. The these. It would go sherbet, pixie, fruit bursts, chocolate fish pinky. And this is yummy. It's like nothing but good. And the cookie, the cookie is a good, good standard. Wait for it. Okay. Oh. Now we did this. They didn't have pineapple lumps. I have had pineapple lumps. They're, they're not too bad. Um, I'm, I'm partial to a perky nana. I don't love banana flavored, 
but they can be good on this occasion. Okay, rations. So little penguin, these are cheesy bacon. Ooh, they, they remind me. So in Australia, we have cheese and bacon bowls. Like Cheetos are cheesy bacon bowls. We don't have Cheetos exactly like American Cheetos. They're a bit different. These look like, you know when, a, you, know when you see a picture of a, like a baby, like a fetus growing? And they're at that stage where they don't look like a, like they're just being coming into a human stage. I know this is really weird, but this is what I thought of. That's what it looks like. I'm like, you know when a fetus is <laughs> growing and you see a picture of it? That's what it looks like. Not to freak anyone out. But like it's like it's like a bag of babies. I know I've just freaked everybody out, but that's, a, you know, intrusive thoughts. That's what came into my head. Oh, these are like Cheetos. Cheese and bacon. Oh. These are good. Maybe they're supposed to be little penguins. I don't get what the shape is. Like that. What is this shape supposed to be? Because that is really odd to me. What is that? Neck pillows, maybe? Crabs? You got crabs. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bluebird? It's supposed to be a penguin, it's called Bluebird. Cheese and bacon flavored snack. Okay. Only 2.3 grams of sugar. Mm, I don't think they're appropriate for dogs. Baby Bengal fetuses. They're like... Okay, for Australians. They, they're like the cheese and bacon balls, but they're crunchier. They're more like... Not as crunchy as a twisty, but kind of like a cheesel, but like fatter. Mm. And they've got... They just taste like cheese and bacon balls. More cheesy like a cheese twisty. That's it, no more. These are very good. Very crunchy. Savory, but like a slight bit of sweetness. Mm. But then they kind of dissolves on the back of your, your teeth. If you've ever eaten cheese and bacon balls or like Cheetos, how do you know how they get stuck to the back of your teeth? <coughs> <coughs> These rations are new shape introduced a few years ago and people are mad. Well, how come? Why don't people like them? They don't like eating little fetuses? Wait for it. Mm 
the drove rations that they were as what they were are all different. You'd reach in the bag and root around for that extra large puffy one covered in delicious flavor. Hitting the jackpot. Okay. Okay. Look at this. Okay, look at that. And then look at that. Doesn't that look like similar? That's the first thing that I thought of. It was like a little fetus. <laughs> terrible, terrible marketing. Okay. The one on the right is a ration. I would love to see Molly do an ink blot test. We should do a stream where you guys give me an ink blot test and I'll do it on stream live. Like a live react. The other day, I watched a video, it was just yesterday, the day before, and they were doing this thing and the lady was saying she saw a bird or something. I saw Snoop Dogg. It was like a video. And I went into the comments and other people saw Snoop Dogg too. I didn't feel so terrible. Okay. So with the meatloaf, do I take the whole thing out and put it on a plate? How does it work? Does the whole thing get served? Or just slice it in, in the pan? I think this is ready. All right, how does my meatloaf look? I don't think I've ever made a meatloaf like this. Oh, I didn't put cheese in it. Am I supposed to put cheese? We didn't do cheese. I feel like meatloaf needs cheese. You never, oh, we, the what? You guys never add cheese? You are missing out. I feel like this would be perfect for cheese. I wonder if it's ready. Oh, it's very tender. No, no cheese. Oh my goodness. You guys are missing out. Okay. I don't know if it's coming out. Oh, it tastes good though. From what I've got on my... Oh. I suppose you meant to let it cool so it kind of like hurt, firms up. Oh. This is like a more... Like a softer rissole. Guys, I'm a fan. Look how moist this is. Yum. Mmm. Am I supposed to let it sit? Like a lasagna, firm up. Have you ever let food cool before Molly? I'm not into that. <laughs> I've had enough time living bread, like, I like to eat, things, like, I like to just get in and try things. I'm burning myself, I eat hot too, food and it's too hot. I don't like to wait around. I told you, my mum was always called me too fast Ted. So I was always running, like doing things a million miles an hour. This is really good. Mm. My mouth, my hands are like, over the years I've got better. Um, my hands and my 
mouth eating hot food. This is tasty. The mixture like tomato barbecue sauce with the Worcestershire was a good choice. Mmm. I don't think it needs a lot of sauce. Yesterday I completely laughed at your instructions to not eat the banana bread warm. Yeah, it's hard. So like even, this is like, it's got ketchup on the surface, right? Or the sauce on the top. This on its own as well is really good. Mmm. I shape my meatloaf like a loaf of bread freestyle. Oh yeah, so you don't put it in a tin. So carrot, the, the um, potato in here is really nice. This is a really healthy meal. What do you think about it? Like beef, veggies, bit of panko, eggs. Mmm. Yum. I'm a fan. Everyone's always hated on meatloaf. I get that people can make it dry, but this is really moist and it's really yummy. Um, the sauce is really good. Mmm. My mum would always, I like the bunt tin. That makes a good, I can imagine that was a good shape. Easy to cut in a bunt mold. This reminds me of my childhood. In a weird way. Perfect end to nostalgia week. Because this reminds me of Rissoles. It's basically what we would make meatloaf. But then we would put it in patties and you would fry it. And we would call them Rissoles. But it always had carrot, potato, veggies, egg, breadcrumbs. But I like the addition of this, this sauce. Mine's not really holding its shape very well, so I need to do better. Would you, how would you recommend me keeping its shape? Mixing it more? Adding more egg? Like it's not really keeping its shape. No. I like the glaze. I like the idea of putting the sauce on and then it baking, like in going a bit syrupy. I like that. Okay. So in here, I would say I use half a pound of beef, one grated egg, half a grated carrot, a third of a cup of breadcrumbs, one egg, salt, pepper, Worcestershire sauce, Two teaspoons, or a tea, uh, sorry, a tablespoon to two tablespoons of um, ketchup or tomato sauce. Um, is that it? A bit mm, more binder and let it sit slightly. I don't like letting it sit. Mmm, I'm in love. Me life is good. so bloody hot so I should let it cool I'll let that cool and I'll let you know how it goes when it's it's solid mm. Chester um, is here he's very keen Rome just come this is so good. Thank you for the suggestion. We love meatloaf now. Any moment. There you go. Try the leftovers tomorrow. I'm, it's in a sandwich. This is going to be good um, tired food for me tomorrow because I'm going to be exhausted after pink. I'm going to sit and watch a movie, my weekend food, watch a movie with meatloaf. Yum. Delicious. Thank you for the suggestions. And carrot and potato belong in meatloaf. Big fan. Huge fan. Mmm. 
Okay. So nostalgia week. We started with what are we doing week one? Uh, stream one. Ba, ba, ba. What do we do on stream one? Let me have a look. Um, okay, twice baked potatoes. I like them. Thumbprint cookies I didn't really like, but Exceed said they were fantastic. He said some of the best cookies I've made. Crazy. Walking tacos, big fan. Rotel dip. Okay, it's a bit simple for me, but I, I didn't mind it. Poor man's pizza. I, I thought it was a bit of fun. Um, meatloaf, probably my favorite out of a whole week. I'm a big fan of the meatloaf. Um, German pancake as well, big up there, but I have had it before. Um, Twice baked potatoes, fantastic. What was your what is your dish of the week, guys? What like nostalgic food? Twice baked potatoes, thumbprint cookies, walking tacos, rotel dip, poor men's pizza, meatloaf, and German pancakes. Anything that you? Oh, there was, I feel like there was something else I made on Monday. And rations. Mm. I feel really sick now from all the sugar, so I'm trying to eat savory. Donuts. That was what we made on Monday. We did donuts, pink donuts. Good memory. Cinnamon donuts. I'll update that. Thank you. Um, donut. What was it called? Donut. What the heck was that called? A donut. Why am I doing this? If you were here, you know what I'm talking about. A donut jug? Donut dispenser? There we go. We'll call it a donut dispenser. Funny how I remember that, but came in right as they were being finished. But it's good. Obviously, they were um, uh, memorable. Just make a GIF of the hand gesture and use it in place of the name. This. You guys know that. You know this thing. You remember what we did last week? We did this. Be astronauts, be juicy. Oh my goodness, guys. I am full as a full as a gook. Thank you, Tampotsa, for this ten dollars towards the goal. Unfortunately we didn't do it this week, but that's okay. We've got time. Um, so we're at 160 of 2200. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I will... I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you. And catch! Thank you! Not bad. Hey, turn the... There we go. No, I'll show you what I can do. Oh, I need a token. For some reason it logged out of Twitch. Um, what do you guys got planned for the weekend? Who's doing something fun? I get two fucked up, but it anno also annoys me. Do you guys feel the same way? Inconvenient. Okay. So many people are playing Final Fantasy. I have a nef nephew. How exciting! Oh my gosh! Take lots of photos. Um, he's grown. I bet he's grown so much. Um, that's very very cool. I'm very chuffed to hear that he's coming to visit. That would be amazing. I can't wait to see my nephew. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, whatever you choose to do. Oh, goodness me. Um, who should we send? 
Hey. Surrender picks. Is raiding, uh, is, is raiding, is cooking. S E R E N D E D I P X. There we go. Um, guys, as I said, I know it's a short stream, I'm sorry, but I've got some stuff to get done today before we go out. Um, come and hang out, barbecue stream. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do an outdoor stream on Monday. It's going to get a little bit crazy, um, a little bit silly. Um, we're going to have some fun milestones and we're going to raise some money for childhood sarcoma research. So it is a charity that we have been aligned with for the last two years, three years, um, that we love to be a part of Cure Cancer and Game On Cancer. Um, and they asked us to be a part of barbecue. So we're barbecuing and I thought it'd be fun to go outside um, and show you a bit of um, the wilderness. <laughs> Not really. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean when I say that. Oh. Thank you for those who have supported the stream today. Kerry, resub for 47 months and M Potslap for the $10. It really makes a difference to the contributions, make a difference to keeping me here, keeping me in work. So I really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed the stream today or at any time and you would like to support, um, tip me for my good work, please consider exclamation mark uh, goal, subscribing, cheering, tipping, or buying merch. Uh, checking out the website, making recipes and commenting is great too. Have a great weekend. Love you. Take care, brush your hair, be good to yourself and those around you.